Hi everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia, and today's DIYs are all Dollar Tree Honey Bee themed decor pieces. The first DIY in today's video is a honey garden steak. Here are all of the supplies that you'll need to recreate this DIY on your own. This honey image came from the farmer's market calendar, but you could always print one out that you liked or use another image. And we're also going to be using some paint sticks, but I need them to be black, so went ahead and painted those. And what I'm going to be doing is eventually gluing down the paint sticks and the honey sign onto this foam core board, but before I could do that, I had to get some measurements and by measurements I mean I just kind of eyeballed it but I am going to be making a border out of these paint sticks so I spent a little bit of time just placing them down and trying to arrange them in a way that I thought looked nice. Once I knew the length I wanted my paint sticks I went ahead and took my miter shears. I'll link these below. I got them off of Amazon and I just cut off any of that excess paint stick. The length of your paint sticks is going to entirely depend on how large your sign is and I did cut this calendar image down a little bit because I wanted the honey to be centered but just for reference the top two paint sticks I ended up cutting at 9 inches and then the two paint sticks that are on the sides were 10 inches and about a quarter. Before I glue all of this down I'm going to be painting the foam core board black. There are lines in the back of the calendar image. It's a gorgeous calendar, but the pages are pretty thin and I don't want those lines to shine through. So a really easy way is to just paint it black and then you won't see any of the black calendar lines. I use spray adhesive to adhere down my honey calendar image. And then I have this really fun tool that I got from Plaid. They own Mod Podge, so it's a tool for Mod Podge owned by Plaid. And it's like this little rolling pin and it's so nice because I used to use an old gift card to get out any of the air bubbles, but this little rolling pin was really fun to use and it worked great, no air bubbles. And of course, you could do this entire DIY using a wood sign instead of the foam core board, but I do that a lot using the wood sign, so I wanted to show you all a different option. And also, this is a lot lighter than a piece of wood. It's light foam core board, so it is more likely to stand up on its own. Once the hot glue was dry, I just took a box cutter to cut out my sign and pop it out of the foam core board. The top and bottom cut really smooth, but the edges I had a little bit of trouble with, so I just went ahead and trimmed off any of the foam core board that didn't get cut nice and smooth with the box cutter. And then I took some black paint and a small foam paintbrush and painted all along the sides, and I also painted the entire back of the sign in the same black color. I wanted my sign to have some iron details, but of course real iron would have been way too heavy for a foam core board sign. So instead I took this plastic garden fence that I found at the Dollar Tree and my miter shears that I had used earlier also, and I just cut out these little swirl details in the plastic fence. I cut out two of these, one to use on the top of the sign and one to use on the bottom of our sign. Then I just applied some hot glue and placed it on the top. I did have to hold it in place for about a minute and to make sure that it was extra secure, I did take some hot glue and apply it to the back of our faux iron as well. Lastly, to make this into a sign that we can actually stake into the ground, I took a very large, I believe they're intended for s'mores, a s'more stick and hot glued it to the back of the sign. They are also found at the Dollar Tree. Because I had to use quite a bit of hot glue on the back of the sign, I just took a little sponge brush and some black paint and went over where those faux wrought iron swirls were. The next honey inspired DIY is a honeycomb vase. Here are all of the supplies that you'll need to recreate this on your own. I'm going to be using chicken wire that I found at my Dollar Tree in this DIY, but I know that this is a harder to find item, but don't worry, you can still do this DIY. I would suggest using the clear sink mats that are found in the kitchen section, or you can also use one of the rubber grippies that go under mats. They're like a mat, but the rubbery ones that are found in the home goods section of the Dollar Tree. 
Both of those, when painted and styled, also look like chicken wire. The good thing about using those two is that they wouldn't poke you like this chicken wire was doing to me. And all that I'm doing is wrapping the chicken wire around this Dollar Tree vase, and then at the top, I just tucked the chicken wire down into our glass vase. The idea behind this DIY is I wanted to turn the vase into something that resembled a beehive or a honeycomb. So I know that I could have gone in with orange or a yellow paint to kind of make that point more obvious, but I also wanted this to match the decor in my home right now so that I could actually use it. So I decided to paint it entirely white using my Waverly paint in white. I'm going to end up using sunflowers in this vase, but I also think it would be so pretty if you put in a LED candle and then it would glow with a yellow orangey color through the vase. And like most of my DIYs, I can't just leave it white. I have to go in with my stippling brush from the Crafter Square section of the Dollar Tree and some brown paint, and then I just dry brushed it onto my vase, creating a nice distressed look. There's a couple different options for what you can use on the next part of this project. Some of this nautical rope cotton or nautical rope jute would work really well, but an even cheaper option, because you get lots of pieces of rope for only a dollar, is taking one of the mop heads from the Dollar Tree. And I really liked it because it was a softer texture to work with, so it really laid flat and was very pliable. So I just tied it once around our glass jar, and then I went in with one other piece, but I didn't want this piece to be hanging down the front, so I just cut it in the back and hot glued it down. Next, I took a piece of jute and I tied it around our honeycomb vase in between the two mop strands. And this jute is going to be holding up our little bumblebee wood laser cutout. I thought these laser cutouts were so cute, but I couldn't tell if this one was supposed to be a bumblebee or a ladybug or just an insect. So that's why I went ahead and painted it so that it looked more like a bumblebee. But I also really love just the plain wood. I wasn't sure which one to use. I thought the bright colors popped a little bit more for this video and pictures but personally, I really liked just the plain wood laser cutout. Also, the ends of the mop were fraying and I thought looked just a little bit messy, so I did take a lighter and I just burned the ends so that they wouldn't fray. I did go ahead and do this outside. I lived in an apartment building and was a little scared I might set off a smoke detector or something, so I did that off camera. I wanted to bring in those warm honey tones, so I decided to go with some sunflowers from the Dollar Tree. But like I said earlier, I think it'd be really beautiful to put in an LED candle and then it would shine a yellow honey color at night. The next project is a faux book stack with a honey theme. Here's everything that you'll need to complete this DIY on your own. To start off this DIY, I'm going to paint my wood crate yellow. I didn't do anything special here, so I didn't think it was necessary to show you all. I just painted the wood crate from the Dollar Tree yellow. Now to transfer on our honeycomb, I'm using the graphite method. I just Google searched honeycombs on Google, printed out a sheet of honeycombs. Then I took a pencil and scratched it on the back. Then I placed this onto the top of our crate and with a pen, I just pressed down along those lines and the graphite remains. I did a really in-depth tutorial on how to do this method of transferring in one of my Christmas videos. So I will link that above if you needed some more instructions on how to do this. Then I found these gorgeous bee printables. They were completely free and I will link them below. And I loved the way this bee looked and I wanted him to go onto the front of my book stack or wood crate from the Dollar Tree. And I just put a little bit of Mod Podge over him so that he would stay in place. And I liked them so much that I also cut out a smaller one and put it in the top left corner of my wood crate. I actually didn't mind the way that the transfer came out, but I still wanted it to pop a little bit more. So I went over my honeycomb tracings with a gold pen from the Crafter Square section of the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be writing words on each of my books, and the Dollar Tree has great options. You can use a stencil or one of their many rub-on transfers, but the Dollar Tree also recently started carrying vinyl, and I had to try it out. So I did use my Cricut and some vinyl to write Sweet Like Honey. 
And of course, it would not be a farmhouse tutorial if there wasn't some distressing involved. So I took a little bit of my Waverly white chalk paint and just went over the entire DIY. I'm not sure who is the original creator or whoever figured out first that if you flip the Dollar Tree crates over, it looks like three books stacked on top of each other, but whoever did, I absolutely love this idea. I think it comes out so cute looking like a stack of books. So of course, to hold my stack of books together, I had to use some jute. And I also really liked these sprigs of greenery, also from the Dollar Tree, just added on top of our book stack. This is the first time I've created a faux book stack. Let me know in the comments down below if you knew about this hack using one of the Dollar Tree wood crates. The last DIY in today's video is a super quick and easy one as I show you how to make your own bee bath. Here's what you need. I saw this candle warmer at the Dollar Tree and thought the coloring and the shape was too perfect not to use for my bee bath. So I'm just taking some of this nautical rope that I found near the crafter square section, kind of where they keep the faux florals, and I wrapped it around twice around the candle warmer to hide the holes. Then I'm going to be using a decal that I made which says be our guest, but you can add in any lettering or image that you like. If you're unfamiliar with what a bee bath is, it's really cute and I learned about it recently. And basically it's an area for bees to drink some water. Bees need lots of water throughout their day, not only to make honey, but also keep the hives nice and cool and many other reasons that you could also look up. But basically we're gonna be putting some rocks in the top of our bee bath. You don't want to submerge the rocks in the water. You want them to be poking up a bit because we don't want our bees to fall in the water. We want to have the rocks poking out so that the bees can perch on top of the rock and then dip down and have some nice water to drink. This DIY would go perfect in any fairy garden that you're creating this spring and summer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next Thursday with a new video. Until then, keep searching, keep creating.